wanted to show you guys something, okay? Earlier today, earlier today, I did a little thing. And I do this every once in a while. Oops, I better hide that. I better take that text off. That's not accurate, okay? Earlier today, I did a little thing. Hold on, this is kind of ugly in its current form. Here we go. Um, this is a little exercise I do every once in a while. Oops, I, oh, I forgot a row. Well, we can do that live. I'll show you how I do it, okay? Um, a gold star means completely original content. Um, completely original content, okay? It's something that is either something I completely discovered, like, essentially on my own, or is, like, something that is only can be found on my channel and nowhere else. A blue R, uh, like the letter R, is React content. And a red, cir red spiral, or a messy circle, depending, is drama content, okay? And, um... We, so we can do this live. So down here, let's talk detransition. This is me telling my own personal story and talking about uh, evidence-based information on detransition. So that gets a yellow star, okay? Here's another one. Should we eliminate religion? Atheism debate. This is a debate that I had with a caller. It's my, my opinions my callers, my debate. It's scary how wrong everyone is about kink. Kink isn't evil. This is another original content. I am talking about something that's important to me, um, and it's my 100% own opinion. And down here, Sniper Wolf doxing Jack's films is unacceptable and dangerous to all. And this would be what I consider to be drama content. Okay? Now we can zoom out real quick and we can take a look. Let's count them up real quick. So we'll count up the reds first. One, two, three, and those were technically from the same stream, but it doesn't matter. Four. We got four red marks, okay? Interesting, right? So now let's do the blues. We'll do the, we'll do the blue ones next. We got one, two, three, Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now let's do the yellow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now that right there. That feels good to me, okay? That feels really good to me, okay? Now, of course, let's, let's go through these, uh, the drama ones that I've done. We did, we have three of the four drama streams that I've done are drama mamas. And a drama mama stream is uh, very deliberately designed to be talking about an important issue to be focusing on t turning people out of drama, turning people's drama brains off and teaching them to understand the situation and constantly reinforcing the need to uh, adhere to the facts, to be uh, not overreactive, to not jump to conclusions. That is the purpose of Drama Mama. So three of the drama streams that I've done have been Drama Mamas. And the fourth drama stream that I did was a short video denouncing a unequivocally bad situation that just happens to be drama. So out of those, I feel very confident that what I have produced is something um, unique, productive, healthy, and valuable. That's what I feel about all of these. My drama mamas are heavily structured. They take a drama subject, usually one that is from, uh, that is, like large in scale and has major impact and tries to get people to engage with it in a productive manner. Now let's do the same exercise for our React segments. This one was a news React where I basically read 
the uh, uh, right as soon as almost immediately, almost the moment that it dropped, the obituary for Henry Kissinger when we I had not even planned that. And I still stand by this one, although most of it was me reading and reacting to a fantastic article uh, published by the Rolling Stone. Still, I think this was highly informative. I think people probably learned a lot from it. I learned a lot from it, and I think I did a high-quality reading. Now, here we have uh, my reaction, my live, not live reaction, but my reaction to the interview with Elon Musk. Absolutely fantastic stream, extremely popular. People absolutely loved it. Um, people loved it. It was funny. I was making jokes the entire time. We were laughing. I was having a absolute blast. The same, of course, applies to this debate react, which this one was, uh, was meant to be one video, but we had to break it into two because of an error. Um, so th we can count this one as one video, basically. We'll just draw a little square around these, I guess. Um, this was a, uh, like five hour long react where I gave a ton of my own opinions and used their conversation, which was very interesting, as a springboard. I think it was productive. I think we were able to dive deeply um, into the arguments. People had a great time. It's where this meme came from. <laughs> that like, like ridiculous laugh was a product of that debate. It was very, very fun and, um, and incredible. Uh, Gayfesh asks, why is Holy Mac a gold star and not an R? Um, that's the reason why Holy Mac is a gold star and not an R is because nobody else on the planet reacts to Holy Mac and 90% of Holy Mac is us riffing alongside Holy Mac. I don't think it even counts. It is technically a react format, but it is a react in name only because Holy Mac has so much more tied into it that I don't think that I think I'm I'm being fair to myself by calling it completely original content even though we are reacting to Holy Mac there is so much more going on there's so much lore and it ties so much into the other stuff that we talked about that we talk about that I don't think it counts as react content in the traditional sense it is it is technically true that you could count that you could also count um the uh this cooking mama as a react as well this cooking mama could count as a react as well and i'd even be okay with giving that with with turning that one into an r if if people wanted to uh if they thought it's unfair but i also think that cooking mama is there is so much more that goes into cooking mama that it's not just a react i'm not just taking something um i'm not just taking a video and going Oh yeah, here's my feeling on it. Wow, whoa. You know, I'm not just doing that. But it's it, I can understand it. Cooking Mama usually has a lot more stuff involved in it. We have a couple of channels that we specifically follow that have deep lore uh, that we've built up as a uh, as like almost like a okay, not a dialogue. Hmm. It's like it's more like a zoo than a react. That's what I'll put for uh, for Cooking Mama. Although I will, I do accept the argument that that some of the Cooking Mamas lean more into the React content. But anyway, so here's the other one. Here's the bread. See, here's a bread tube React. This one is me reacting to somebody else's video and sharing my thoughts. And I think this, I think there's a very big difference between like a bread tube or a debate React versus what goes on with Holy Mac. Yeah, I, exactly. Diamond King, I, I agree with you. Diamond King says, to be fair, your reacts also add a lot. So I don't think it's bad to classify Holy Mac and Cooking Mamas as react content. By the way, don't none of these are bad. I am proud of every single one of these videos. All of these videos that I've put out are videos that I'm proud of. I don't feel bad about them at all. I just, uh, from time to time, audit my channel um, in like as, a, as an exercise to... Uh, to like, I guess, ground myself in the types of content that I'm creating. Um, and I don't want the balance to be off because reacts really are fun and I think they're good. I think it's a good thing. It's a healthy thing, in fact, to um, encourage uh, a certain amount of like people sharing their thoughts on other people's work together with their audiences. I think that creates healthy flows 
um, as long as it's not overdone. But there has to be a balance, right? And for me, I am, I highly value on a personal level, my own original, like 100% original content. Um, and also for me, on my purposes, the part of the reason why I consider Holy Mac not a react is because my relationship to Holy Mackerel, my personal, like how I feel and engage with Holy Mac is very different than how I engage with and feel about um, like general react content. I have a very deep and long standing, literally years long connection with Holy Mac now. There's like a meta lore. There's all kinds of stuff. I've done like three different retrospectives in order to make sure that my new new members of my audience are brought on board um, with, with that. Anyway, I've been rambling about this. Um, oh yeah, I, yeah, Ross 7, I need to do that at some point. I will, I will do that at some point. Anyway, uh, not to get too distracted on this. Um, um, thank you, Trans Girl Lily. Let's continue. Let's consent. Let's continue. So next, react the bread tube. React. I feel like this was a really good conversation. I think it prompted really good critiques. I'm glad that I shared this with people, and the creator of this video uh, uh, reacted positively to my reaction. Uh, Catherine who made this fantastic video about BreadTube actually left a comment on the video and uh, was very happy for the support from the imps. That's really, really good, everybody. Um, next reaction, the D-Trans high budget misinformation. Um, this video, of course, I'm very, very proud of. This is one in which we reacted to PragerU's disgusting um, propaganda film. And given that I have a lot of personal uh, experience with and knowledge on the subject, uh, I feel like I was able to not only um, counter and debunk a lot of the claims in this video, but that I was also uh, just able to generally add valuable commentary. So I feel like this was a, I feel very good about this react. Now let's talk about the original content. Milo Yiannopoulos exposed by Canon Law Enforcer. This is of course a holy mackerel react. A holy mackerel react, by the way, which has a secret. By the way, for all of you who saw that video but didn't watch the VOD, you should go check out the VOD because we actually cut out something out of that video. The, uh, in the original version of that video, we actually reacted to a road trip special episode, which um, was... It was, it was not for the faint of heart, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. The road trip react video, or the road trip video special was, uh, it wasn't as entertaining as usual Holy Mac, and it made even less sense if you aren't also tuned into the whole Michael Voris uh, uh, situation and the, the behind the scenes there. But if you go watch the VOD, you'll get to see that part. Ah, yes, thank you so much, uh, Emu Anon. Yes, we've had a couple of people um, save, uh, uh, archive the, the entirety of Holy Mac. Um, but anyway, uh, so there's that one. Then there is covering the breaking news of the death of Church Militant, which involved uh, uh, me uh, collating a bunch of different sources us watching and reacting to those sources, assembling a narr uh, assembling the narrative, and uh, going through some old content that I was familiar with. This was a bunch of stuff that I was very familiar with, uh, that I was able to show and discuss with you, and it was awesome. Of course, here we have the, um, the No Meat on Fridays, Holy Mackerel, four and a half hour mega show, which was me uh, curating and putting together a whole bunch of episodes to catch people up to speed who may not have known what Holy Mackerel was. Easy peasy, awesome shit. Here is my cringe-proof holiday family debate guide, which is just off the cuff, uh, f like five pieces of advice to help you have a better time if you get in a debate with your family 
at the holidays. It says for Thanksgiving, it actually applies for Christmas as well. Maybe I'll do a second Christmas version where I tighten it up a little bit, but that's just my personal debate advice as somebody who's not just been in a lot of debates generally, but also been in a lot of debates with aggressive family members where you don't really have an opportunity to leave. It's like, you know, you're a cap you're ca you're a captive audience to people's random ranting sometimes when you're in these. And I wanted to make sure I gave people the tools to have a better time with that. So here we have a cooking mama, which honestly, you know what, will be fair. We'll turn this one into a react. It's a good react. It's lore, but it's 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 still a good it's still a react. We'll we'll do that. That's fine. I'm fine with calling that one a react. We'll move one over here and we'll put the react over here. Wait, where's that? I want to draw. Hold on. There we go. Whoop. That's fine. All right. Next. Then we have uh, the next one. We have the uh, the genocide. The Joe Biden's refusal to see reason may cost him the election. This is me talking about a whole bunch of different news articles and giving my opinion uh, about the risks uh, currently uh, uh, that are present in Joe Biden's current electoral strategy, which is crap, but yeah. Then we have me and Gayfesh reviewing Killers of the Flower Moon. This is just me and Gayfesh giving all of our thoughts about a fantastic movie. Excellent. By the way, didn't do so good on views, you motherfuckers. Watch my review content. My review content is sick as hell. And then... We have the truth of detransition, evidence, data, and my personal story. This is me just spending about 40 minutes talking about my own personal experience with detransition, my opinions on detransition, and the material facts of detransition uh, to hopefully be able to talk with people in a meaningful way. Then we have a debate, which I don't do all that often anymore. We have a debate about uh, atheism, um, which was just... Me arguing with some, one of my callers, sharing my personal opinions. Love it. And then next is a segment that I did talking about kink and the ways that people misunderstand kink and the reasons, uh, the, the, the sort of fa uh, uh, flaws in logic that people have towards it, uh, defusing people's uh, discussed opinions, just me talking about a topic that I care about. I know this might come as a shocker, but I care quite a lot about kink, actually. So there you have it. I know this has been a bit of a ramble, but I wanted to show you guys just a little process that I go through sometimes to sort of audit, um, to just sort of keep, make sure that the balance is maintained on my channel, you know? Because I never want to get, I never want to find myself in a position where I feel unhappy with the balance of content on my channel. The truth of the matter, of course, and something that, that nearly everyone has been uh, thinking about in these spaces in the wake of the um incredible uh uh h-bomber guy expose of illuminati uh phil's i think his name was and james summerton and internet historian is the content grind um and the uh the content uh uh the content grind is brutal it is mind crushing and it does successfully uh, crush the souls of a lot of content creators. That's what they call us now, is content creators. Um, they kind of just flatten down um, everything that we do into one uh, homogenous pace that we call content creation. And, um, and uh, <sighs> There is a, it's very difficult to keep up with the demands of YouTube. YouTube does want you to upload as frequently as possible. YouTube does uh, reward you for doing so. Um, the fastest growth that my channel has ever received, the, the fastest period of growth was when I was putting out a video every single day on my channel. Um, but that's a lot of work. And I felt like it was causing a decline in the quality of my content and in the quality of my mental health. Um, 
even as a streamer where I can stream and turn stuff into segments, like I still have to come up with those segments. I still have to have something to say. I still have to make it entertaining, come up with jokes, keep the energy high, uh, be engaging, all of that. It's really, really difficult to, to make enough content to put out a video every single day. But YouTube will reward you for doing it. Um, unfortunately, that structure incentivizes people taking cutting a lot of corners. It incentivizes people um, uh, basically uh, uh, dunking the co the quality of what they create into the trash, or cheating, or stealing, and that's no good. Um, and uh, it sucks because you actually do have to um, as a, as a person who is making stuff on this website, you have to learn how uh to uh deal with a certain type of suffering you have to learn how to accept uh less channel success which is basically if you want to actually have a sustainable product in the long run and if you want to have a product that's that that you can be proud of um you have to basically take a financial hit you will not be as financially successful if you do things the way I do or the way other channels uh, who are even more original and creative than me and artistic than me um, do. It is just very, very difficult to do that. Um, and there are, of course, some things that lend themselves very well to daily uploads, certain types of content. Um, for example, um, I don't know. Uh, if you do short form content, uh, it's a little bit easier to make sure that you're getting something out every day. Maybe you film, you know, seven things in a single sit down and they're all like good ideas and then you bang them out day after day and they're short form videos. But long form content, it's a lot harder to do that. It's in fact, sometimes actually impossible. Um, wow, that's wonderful, Dark Canuck. Congratulations, uh, congratulations to your daughter. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, not to distract, but I just wanted to say that. Um, and of course it drives you crazy. Yes, as, as Somniostatic says, it absolutely does, um, does, uh, drive you crazy. Um, yeah, Danny, Danny Fallen says, gaming content is easy for daily uploads. Short form content is also easier, especially if it's not long edit processes, but long form content daily is just not feasible. And long form content is good. I'm not saying that short form content is bad or that gaming content is bad. Um, they're good. They're just only one form of thing. Um, and of course, like there was a big call out in the, uh, in the H bomber guy video towards drama. Now you might be going, Jesus Christ, demon mama was all of this just a gigantic long winded setup to ultimately explain uh, or commentate on the donation that you received talking about drama? And the answer is yes. Yes, it was. It actually absolutely fucking was. So this is where it gets really uh, perverse and messed up, okay? Because um, there is a type of content that is incredibly... I should say this with an asterisk, but is incredibly, incredibly easy to produce an ungodly amount of content for in a, sh in a short period amount of time that you can churn out every single day forever. And that type of content is drama content. You basically look for people who are fighting. The bigger the people involved, the better, but not always. It doesn't always have to be big figures who are fighting. Look for people who are fighting for, for, for whatever reason and give your shitty opinion on it. Um... Yeah, just give your shitty opinion on it. And it doesn't have to be important. They could be just calling each other names. Maybe one of them shit on somebody else's couch. Uh, maybe that's maybe maybe one of them did something horrible. But it doesn't really matter. It can just be anything. And guess what? If two people aren't fighting, well, you could always make two people fight. That's something you can do. That happens all the time. That's what we like to call drama farming. Drama farming is when you intentionally prolong or... Uh, otherwise uh, uh, encourage the proliferation of, of conflict in the name of being able to make more content about it. Um, yeah, and there's a perverse um, incentive, of course. 
which is that uh, the more the more the longer a drama goes on, the more likely people are to be invested in it. Um, and of course, um, the uh, the more sh time you can churn out more content about it, which means that it'll have a presence in the algorithm and that encourages other people to get involved. And sometimes the people commentating on drama then start fighting about it themselves and they align into camps and it just makes this whole gigantic um, human centipede of uh, people eating something, digesting it, digesting it, digesting it, digesting it, and it goes all the way through the human centipede. Um, and uh, there, it, there aren't any hard lines really out there between something like a react or giving your opinion um, on, versus drama content. There's no hard line there, but there's definitely a spectrum. And a lot of people are way over on the drama side of the spectrum. And I actually despise it. I actually genuinely hate it. And what's more is that it makes me feel shame. And I mean that. Um, when I look at my channel and I see drama content, the type on the far end of the spectrum, I feel ashamed. And to be honest, there's not much of it. There, uh, there was more in the past before I realized what was even happening. Um, and I can talk about this a little bit, which is um, when I first came into this space, I had never been an online figure of any type. I went uh, from basically having a small group of friends and my partners and a few and some people that I knew to uh, taking a shot at this and all of a sudden there were people who cared about what I had to say and I found myself in this space with other people and my ex my life experience you know because I started streaming when I was uh, when I was had just turned uh, let's see no yeah it would have been a few months after I turned 29 so almost 30 years of my life I lived as an offline figure and then I became a public figure online and um when I came into these spaces, I thought that like a lot of conflict was organic and real. And I, and so, and also there is like, this is another thing that happens, which is that sometimes it is organic and real, or at least one person who's engaging in it is organic and real, and they can still be sucked into a drama cycle nonetheless. Like say for example, um, Say, for example, um, uh, um, sorry, I just got a message. Um, say, for example, uh, that uh, some streamer makes a claim about you, and then you say, hey, that's not fucking true, and then you respond to it, and then that streamer makes another video about you dissecting your response, and then you are like, hey, but they still lied in their response video, so I need to respond to it. And then they make a response to your response, and it goes like this forever. And depending on the situation, um, you might have a very, very valid claim um, to, uh, to want to respond. You may really feel like you've been wronged, and it might not matter because you're being farmed for content. So no matter what you say, even if you tell the absolute truth, it might not actually matter in the end because you're being farmed for drama content. Um, and all of this was to say that when I first joined the space, I didn't understand how drama content worked. I didn't even understand it was really a thing. I thought that when people were conflicting, uh, I mean, I knew, of course, of things like, you know, like, 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 uh, gossip mags and things like that, but they seemed very different to me. And I didn't realize what they looked like in YouTube form. And so, um, there was, there was all this stuff and, uh, it can be very hard to, um, it can be really, really hard to actually, um, when you're new to a space like this, when you haven't seen any of it before, and hell, even when you aren't, it can be really hard to draw the line between engaging in drama and giving your opinion on something that you care about. You guys will notice that, um, or maybe you haven't, I don't know. I, of course, know this. There are some um, topics that I've talked about on my stream that also happen to be 
the central subject of a number of dramas. And part of the reason why I, uh, especially this year and the end of last year, have begun doing vi the videos like that is because um, that's how you talk about a topic you care about without stepping in a stupid, pointless drama. You can actually talk about these topics and you can just say, I'm going to give my opinion about a topic and I'm not going to get personal. I'm not going to go about around specific people. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time reacting to their videos and going this, that, and the other thing. Um, but it can be really difficult to like find that balance when you're a new creator. And I certainly uh, failed at it at times. Um, you know, there was many times in the past where I felt like I was just giving my opinion on something that people were talking about. Um, but I learned pretty quick, admittedly. You guys know that the imps code, and for those who still remember the imps code, uh, a lot of you will remember that the imps code was designed to address this problem specifically on Twitter. Um, so I started kind of figuring it out pretty quick. You know, I'm a quick learner. You kind of have to be in these spaces, but uh, still, um, Sometimes you make mistakes and also sometimes you just don't know what you don't realize what you're doing. And also sometimes, uh, sometimes you, there is, you don't really have much of a choice. There are times where, uh, getting involved in a drama is almost inevitable, um, or is inevitable. Um, but I think those times are pretty rare. Um, this year, for example, I made one mistake, which is I stepped in it with that, uh, foreign man video the 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 one that was about Vosh and Keffels and Xanderhal and uh, I chose to react to that because it was talking about a bunch of people that I knew because it was talking about subjects that I cared about and instead of just making a video talking about the topics I decided to react to it and then that ended up leading into a conversation with Soul Bunny which was a giant mess and I felt lied to a whole bunch. And then that ended up leading to two other conversations about that. So I didn't even, like, I made one mistake of going, I'm going to watch this video because I saw some of it and it made me mad. And, and then I ended up in weeks of it. And it was the worst I felt. Um, it was right before my trip. And I mentioned this multiple times before my trip uh, that it was the worst I felt this entire year with regard to what I've been creating. Um, just, yeah. Oh, I don't regret that one at all, Ross Evan. Um, but, you know, like I said, there's some times where you don't really have much of a choice. Uh, sometimes something so egregious comes out that you kind of have to step in it, but, um... All of this is to say, drama content is a very tempting uh, type of content. Um, but it's also very low effort. It's very unoriginal. In my opinion, it is largely parasitic. Uh, it encourages people to treat one another like commodities. It encourages people to, uh, to dehumanize one another. It encourages people to uh, uh, ruin friendships for money. Um, it encourages people to do all kinds of, of terrible decisions they wouldn't otherwise do. Um, and what's perhaps worst of all is that it's completely, no, I shouldn't say this is worst of all, but I should say it's the, I should reword that. It's not that it's worst of all. It's that it's, it's the most fucked up part of it all is that it doesn't even sustain you. And people don't even realize that. That drama content is totally and completely unsustainable. The type of viewer base that is attracted to drama content, they they do not give, they don't care at all. They have no taste whatsoever. They are they are literally just grasping for stimulation of any type, even if it's about people they don't even know, and they won't stick around. They're not loyal. They don't think about anything very deeply they uh move from place to place they are are uh, they're incentivized to lie to pop up in chat and say people call them drama frogs because you know they croak they sit there and they croak 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 and they're croaking about this that did you hear what 
what, what, what? Did you hear what this person said? Did you hear? Oh my God, did you hear that? Oh my God, did you hear that? Oh, 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 did you hear that? And then the moment the drama's gone, they hop away. And I've seen it a hundred times. I've been at this for four, almost four years now. We're coming up on the four year anniversary of Demon Mama's stream. And four years in, I have seen so many channels who got, uh, who felt like they were on top of the world because they had a bunch of numbers while they were drama farming. And the moment the drama died out, the moment it got boring, they had nothing. And it devastates you. It devastates your mental state. To, to get like a high and then you you turn on stream one day and you try to talk about something else and you got fucking 30 percent of the viewers that you had that is a it is like oh my god it's like a heart stopper okay i know right danny it's crazy Oh, of course. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Gio Neal. Gio Neal UK says, uh, not only that, but drama farming can end relationships and destroy communities. Yes, it can. And it can also, this is something that a lot of people don't think about. It can end relationships that would have otherwise survived a similar conflict. Okay? Because the incentive to make a little bit of cash or even to make a lot of cash or to boost your viewer numbers is so strong when this is your career, when this is your life, this is what you're doing and this is your future. It is so strong that people will off, that sometimes people will pass up opportunities to otherwise solve the problem and will suffer more just because there's a part of their mind that goes, well, I'm mad about it. And I could also make some money while being mad about it. So why the fuck not? So why the fuck not? And this is, again, I don't want to say there's not any drama that can be enjoyable. Obviously, we loved watching the extreme drama of the collapse of Church Militant. But let's be real. Uh, when we're talking about that, we're talking about a group that is like, one of the, just they're just heinous and they're terrible and it's and we can we can come together and 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 celebrate and also learn something from it you know from that at least at least there's something redeemable about engaging in that drama but a lot of drama content really isn't that a lot of drama content doesn't add anything to the world it really just is oh my god did you hear this and if you don't believe me, go check out some of the drama channels on YouTube. Go check out what their upload schedule looks like. Um, if you go and look up the, the upload history of some of these drama channels, it will be every single day, they'll just be watching a video of somebody else and going, wow, I can't believe you'd say that. And then the next day, that person will react to that video. And then that person will react to that video. That was, and it's just chain reacts of back and forth going, huh, you're an idiot. No, you're an idiot. No, you're an idiot. No, you're an idiot. No, you're an idiot. And this is also, by the way, why I keep drama mamas sparring. And also, we haven't done, no, there's been no drama mama back and forth. My drama mama videos are very, let's look at what's happened. Let's talk about what's happened. And that's it. And if we need to do an update when new information comes out, we'll do it. We don't get involved in, oh, this channel said that my coverage was bad. Ew. You know, we don't do any of that. We don't engage in any of that gar garbage. Mix Dizzy says, you know what else I fucking hate about drama mongers? Those little shits cry wolf so often that I learn to not take drama seriously even when it is meaningful. Yes. Uh, Mixed Dizzy says, initially I played down the Illuminati drama because the behavior of drama frogs was the same for that as every other stupid useless thing. And even though I said I don't care unless someone was abused or had their home and income threatened, no drama frog ever came along to clarify. That's why I came along to clarify. No, I seen this one. No, Ashmar, no. I'll have to address it. I think that the drama content thing is, and the reason why I avoid it 
so strongly is because I think that it largely incentivizes people to behave um, as the worst versions of themselves. I think that it transforms people into the absolute, absolute worst versions of themselves. Um, yeah. Just... Um, and that's part of the reason why I, I have stayed out of the recent wave of, uh, of drama that everybody's been fixating on and talking about. First of all, uh, despite my name being invoked repeatedly without, like, really being consulted on the issue in any way, you know, people don't really... This is something I've dealt with for a long time, as all of you know. I am a presence in this space, and I get invoked a lot without people actually coming to get my opinion, which, by the way, I think is a product, a byproduct of this drama nonsense I'm talking about, uh, that people don't even care. They want to use you as a pawn or as a piece in their drama thing, uh, uh, but they don't actually want to ask you or talk to you because your opinion might be um, inconvenient or whatever, or you might disagree with some of what they say. Um, but, uh, um, but also, so despite that I've been invoked in this recent drama very frequently, it doesn't really have anything to do with me, like at all. It's quite literally an interpersonal disagreement. Um, and uh, yeah. And also, this is the other thing that people should always know about me. Don't try to force me to get involved in something because you will fucking regret that. J just so we're clear. I hope that my reputation on these issues has, uh, has, has been established quite solidly. That uh, because, and I know that it has. I know that it has because when I do speak out on an issue, um, everybody fucking listens. I know they do. And the reason why they do that, it's not some random chance. It's not, uh, despite my incredible hellish beauty and magical energies, it's not actually magic that that, uh, for the reason why that happens. The reason why people listen when I finally talk about something is because I don't get involved until I think I've got a rock solid uh, understanding of the situation and until I'm convinced that it's actually worth talking about. And unfortunately, when, I, when it usually gets to that point, uh, w it, things have gotten serious in a way that requires me to lay down the law, so to say. But yes, I, I have stayed out of uh, the recent drama that everybody's mad about and talking about um, because I think it's a big, ugly mess. And... Um, it's none of my business. It's none of my business. These are adults. They can sort their problems. Or at least I or at least I had assumed that they could. Maybe they can't. But True nuts. Fortnite says, yeah, during the current drama, both sides of it have invoked you without, without really, without, without, I would say without consulting me and have cited your tweet as evidence that you've sided with them. That's pretty stupid. Well, that's, it's interesting, right? Maybe I should have used a Rorschach tweet instead of Dr. Manhattan um, because it, it, it is actually very funny to me that both people seem to think that I was talking about someone else. Very, very funny to me. Spencer Howard with the $10 says, I understand your reservations, and it can be an unfair ask. However, responsible, dispassionate, and critical drama coverage can be incredibly value, and I and many others trust your analysis greatly. Thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much, Spencer Howard. I really do appreciate that a lot. Um, uh, and I agree with you. I do agree that clear-headed, critical drama coverage can be valuable. That's why I do Drama Mama, and that's also why when I try to get involved in a drama, I try to address it as solidly and as uh, effectively as possible. Um, but also, I can't do that if, I, if I'm getting involved in every single drama ever. And of course, there's the other side of it. 
There's the other side of this, which is that I fucking hate it. It's life ruining. It, I'm not, and, and this is where I'm going to be. This is where you get to see me fucking go sicko mode. Okay. Which is that it, I genuinely believe this. Okay. I've said this like 10 times, a bunch of different ways in which drama is bad, that it, that it has perverse incentives, that it, uh, it makes, it, it, it undermines fights, all this type of shit. But there's another aspect, okay, which is that drama, it, it, it sucks your brain away. I'm not even kidding you. And it's something that I've had to deal with a lot this year, even though I have not been making drama content for my channel, even though I have been doing a very good staying out of it, there has been a lot of behind the scenes mess drama, okay? There's been a lot of it and it it is emotionally stressful it disrupts your creative processes, not to sound like some kind of autistic muse or whatever, okay? But straight up, um, it saps your creativity. It distracts you. You will spend hours uh, emotionally thinking through all this garbage and all of that time is stuff that you're not making cooler stuff, that you're not spending uh, becoming inspired, that you're not spending diving into other people's cool stuff, that you're not spending making friends. It is a, it just sucks it all away like a big fat leech getting fat on all of your creative energies, just bloating right up and wriggling away with all of your creative lifeblood. And it is, it is brutal. Oh God, it hurts. And I've encountered this so many times, so many times where I've ended up in some kind of a drama and you just find yourself uninspired, unable to think about anything else. And it's not just me because I can tell you, I watch other people when they get involved in drama and I watch their creativity go down the drain. I watch their, the, the joy in their eyes disappear. Okay. It's terrible. It's ruinous. It makes us all worse. And again, this is not to say there aren't times in which you need to conflict. Conflict does happen. I've talked about this a hundred times. There is going to be conflict. There is going to be disagreement. But that is not really how this drama content shit works, okay? Drama content is filling up the air with uh, with, 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 with broadcasting to everybody that you can find every little issue that you have with another person and them doing the same thing. It's turning on a camera and complaining about people for hours. It's like the worst thing you could do. It's like, it's like flushing your brain, the toilet of your brain and into the mouths of a hundred of a hundred or 200 or 3000 people. Just, just terrible. Ho horrible and then all those people go and stir more drama their days ruined they act like shit it's just a giant toxin okay just just think of it like dumping poison right into your water supply spencer howard with the five dollars says the content you produced and your contributions to the whole foreign man saga was in my opinion a huge net benefit Thanks for being the adult in the room. You're welcome. I did my best. But even with that, I feel like I couldn't succeed. I really did. I got very mad at the at the foreign man video because I think it was extremely dishonest and an incredibly cruel video. And I also think that what happened afterwards was me doing my absolute best to make sure that we were sticking to the truth, that people weren't overreacting and they were, that we were trying to point things in a positive direct direction. And I do think that my conversation with Shark 300 was a very productive and, and very good conversation. But nonetheless, even with all of those considerations, it was still a horrible mess. And I think that uh the less of that type situation we try to create the less that people uh over engage with that type of stuff the less that people try to make a back and forth with that type of content with this kind of wasteful crap the better that this space will be i have a vision okay many of you all of my lovely imps who are here by the way if you are here you got to listen right now, okay? Because I've been talking about this. You all have been hearing the signal for the year. 2023 was the year of the signal, okay? That was the signal arc, okay? You've been hearing the signal. 
Now hear this. 2024 is the year of the Grand Gardener. That is our arc for 2024. The Grand Gardener arc. Because we find ourselves in a wasteland. Okay? A wasteland of uh, uh, after a wildfire. But the soil is fertile. There are seeds to be planted. There is beauty to be grown. And I have a vision that, that a community like mine, as beautiful and wonderful and positive and reinforcing and, uh, and thriving and thoughtful, a community like mine can do a lot of good. And I think that from that sort of foundation, we can grow that outwards. We can spread seeds outwards and see that beauty will grow. We all, I think, have seen how miserable, so much miserable, uh, uh, the, the left-leaning internet spaces have become over time. And I think that we should be done with that. I think it's time to begin to encourage something new. I think it's time to begin to encourage uh, uh, a a actual an actual uh, position of uh, ending cycles of burning things of ending cycles of conflict and instead promoting the thriving of a beautiful garden of creativity a beautiful garden of talent a beautiful garden of communities. Communities that make everyone thrive, like a forest. A forest full of trees, the trees drop their fruit, the ants and the and the and the beetles and the birds and the and the little rodents and the, the deer. They all come and they eat the fruits. And then they go and they have more deers and they have more bugs and they have more creatures. And then there's a river full of fish. And the sometimes the 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 roots of the trees purify the water that filters into the river, and the river's nice and clean. That's what I want to see in the Grand Gardener arc. I want to see a space begin to form that can foster beauty, that can foster uh, artistic wonders, the likes of which we have not yet seen. But I know is possible. I see how much talent is just being wasted in these spaces and being burnt up because of cycles of cruelty, cycles of wasteful farming of other people, uh, of exploitation and of mistreatment. And I think we can do better. I think we can do better, much better, much, much better.